Hey, you all, this is Baron, your boy, Baron. Welcome to Disrupt the Drift. I'm here with my friend, David Masters. How you doing, David? Fantastic. Always better when I'm with you, brother. Yeah, and welcome, you all. Welcome. This is a place where we can tell the truth. And you know that I always think when I say that, that movie, what was it Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise? Hmm. Jack Nicholson. You can't like, handle the truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I forget <laughs> yeah. what the name of the movie. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. And I'm like, no, actually, we can all handle the truth. Yes, we when can. Ready and when we want it. Yeah. When you're seeking soul, it's actually, it's medicine for the soul, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. So we have a question. It, it's someone sent this in. Whoever sent this in, thank you. How can I transition from constantly seeking advice from experts and relying on others for direction to developing self-reliance and confidence in my own decision-making abilities for what's best in my life? That's a great question. It's, again, one of those right. fundamental First questions. thing I want to say, and then I want to hear from you, I'll just add this, is help is not on the way. Help is not on the way. That's something I I really had to learn. I had something in the background at a certain point in my life. I don't know. It's probably in my 30s. And I I had this revelation. I had this really sweaty, amazing yoga practice. And I was in the class. And the class just ended. On the end, you lie in Shavasana, that final relaxation. And I was just there, just present. And I had this revelation. I, I was so present and clear. And I saw something that was haunting me in my life up to that point. And it was that somehow, somewhere, someone was going to rescue me. It was just in the background. And I was like, wow, I'm living like somewhere, somehow, someone's just going to come and rescue me and solve all my problems and tell me how to do things right or something. And then I was like, Wow, I wonder if that comes from when I was really little. We rely on our parents and we always know, we just always have a sense. Our parents, if you had parents that were around enough, gave you enough care and and love uh, you enough, they basically you, you could rely, as a kid, you rely on your parents. It helps on the way. <laughs> You're hungry, need food, need a ride, need some money, helps on the way. But if you don't grow out of that, But I saw, I was in my mid thirties probably. And I I had that revelation. I was like, wow, no, this is my life. This is my life. There's no help on the way. Yeah, that's deep. But at the same time, the internal helper, the inner Mm. helper is always Mm. there. Mm. And see, and and so what we're really, so Read the read the the question again, and 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 I'll give you an overview, yeah. quick overview. Yeah, yeah. How can I transition from constantly seeking advice from experts and relying on others for direction to developing self reliance and confidence in my own decision making abilities? Okay, one word comes to mind. And Mm -hmm. it's usually based on a a simple idea, but it's complex to most people. And that word is doubt. And Mm -hmm. the the word doubt means this, to call into question the truth of, to be uncertain. Now, doesn't that really... Wait, say that again. Okay, so the word doubt means to call into question the truth or to be uncertain. Mm -hmm. And again, when we... React emotionally in the world that we live in, and we were constantly, it's, our world is like a ping pong table. And the ping pong ball is being smacked from side to side to side all day long. We were talking about this before we started. Mm-hmm. They we're constantly being distracted. Mm-hmm. And people are living, it's bread and circuses, it, like in the Roman yeah. days. Yeah. Constant distractions because when we look at the world, it is so confusing. And it's so, and today it's very bizarre. The the things that are going on today, you could never have imagined 10 years ago would be going on today. You throw in social media and all the different opinions and all the distraction and all the hours of scrolling. And so, and what are you taking into your mind is just overwhelm. It is. And so what, but what happens is that when we get frustrated 
And that's a natural thing for people to experience frustration. What's the right answer? That's the question. And people are saying, what should I do? How should I deal with the situation? But when there is emotion added to that question, what should I do? When there's a, when there's a force involved in trying to figure things out, when you have a force of will involved in trying to figure out what the right thing and the wrong thing is, what comes into existence through that force of will, through those emotions, through the, whether it's trying to find a happy place or getting caught in the unhappy place, we develop this thing called a lack of confidence. And it has to do with distrusting ourselves. Yeah, trust. The word trust is your speaking keeps coming to mind. Trust. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah trust we just yourself. But and, and trust how can you? When you're in, when you when diamond. you are the ping yeah. pong ball, right? Again, it goes back to this idea, be still and know. It, That's where you can help yourself. Yeah. yeah. You you can stop being the ping pong ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you start getting present to what you're allowing into your mind. Yeah. And you start noticing all the distractions, the thousands and thousands of ways you distract yourself every day, every moment. Mm -hmm. bleeding out time, bleeding out energy, that when getting still, you get present to a power greater than yourself, something bigger than yourself, which then presences you. And you start seeing, you, you, you start accessing the ability, whatever it is, that inner guidance, your conscience, some inner knowing, and you start acting on that knowing. And as you act on that knowing, and the more you act on that knowing, and you do things that are consistent, congruent with that knowing, inner knowing, you start developing a kind of confidence. And then you can take external, you can listen to experts, and, but you don't listen, you're not listening to what they say, you're listening for something. You're listening for, and not just experts, it could be anyone, right? You're listening. In general, you have a, a looking and a listening. You're looking through a prism that is consistent for what you, the direction that, that gives you the direction to take, perhaps. If you don't know a lot about a yoga practice, let's say, Okay, you don't know a lot. Yeah, you maybe look for a mentor or a teacher that can give you some guidance on how to do the movements properly or in diet or in business. If you're an entrepreneur and you're, you've hit a ceiling and, and you're in overwhelm, you're being the ping pong ball, but you're lick, looking for single data points, I'll say, mm -hmm. like single, like something that you can actually, that cuts through the fog, cuts through the confusion even like here, this podcast, like I didn't know what I was doing when we started this podcast with cameras and lights and microphones. And, and when I first got the equipment, I was like, okay, I don't know how to use any of this. But you know what I did? It was really powerful. I just put my hand, started putting my hands physically on the mics, on the knobs, like physically getting connected to the camera, the lenses, started getting related physically to what was needed. Mm. And I think whether it's in business or in diet or in exercise or in you sl sleep, if you're staying up really late and doing just, again, distractions at late night, just entertaining yourself, and then you're losing sleep, okay, trust, no, no, be in bed by 9.30 or 10. <laughs> just force quit. Be, wake up early. And then you can grab your phone and just go back into distraction mode and scroll through like social media or more distract or no, you don't. You just move yourself over to your meditation chair and just sit and get present. Watch your body sensations. Watch your breath. Open yourself up to seeing something, learning, uh, discovering something about yourself. Set yourself up for the day to be clear, to be here, to be present to be connected, a line of communication to that inner knowing, and then you act on that knowing. And it, the more you trust that knowing and follow that guidance, you build confidence. And to the degree that you don't follow it, 
you undercut your confidence, you go into doubt, into indecision, into overwhelm, down that rabbit hole. So the idea is, though, that when we try to make decisions based on the wrong criteria, when we make decisions emotionally, when mm, we yes. when we are reactive as as opposed to being proactive like you were just discussing. Yeah. But when we are reactive, usually the way that things turn out is not the way we expect it to turn out. And then we begin to question even the things that we think we should do, especially the things that we think we should do because when we react and we are not being uh proactive and looking ahead and being reasonable about things, but when we're being emotional, we make bad decisions. And then the worst part of this is that we start to doubt our own decisions. And this is where the birth of all experts comes from. Because mm. an expert is a person mm. who rises to an occasion mm-hmm. that, that, and they, of course, they have experience you don't have. And, and there are Maybe. how many, yeah. but, but how many millions of experts are there in everything now? And yeah. including all your friends. Your friends think they're experts too. No matter what yeah. it is, you have a conversation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I can tell you right now, you shouldn't do that, blah, blah, blah. So you, but what happens is the only reason you rely on other people more than you rely on yourself is because you don't trust yourself. Mm-hmm. You become emotional. And out of that emotion, you become confused and you lack, and then you lose confidence in that confusion because you begin to question everything. You just weigh and measure. No, nothing mm-hmm. makes sense to you. And that's when you start to rely on other people more than yourself. And that is where the rabbit hole gets really deep and weird because yeah. you yeah. only need a few experts ever, right, yeah. in your life. You actually yeah. like you need a doctor. You need a dentist. You need a few people. If, if you're building a house, you need people that know what they're doing. But – for your own personal life, you don't need to rely on people as much as you need to rely on objectivity. And just that's my main point right there. Yeah. 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 It's, I get that. The more we tend to rely on experts and we don't trust ourselves, we, we, Now, there are times if it's a doctor and you're dealing with some medical situation, do you just wholeheartedly believe everything they say or do you get a second opinion or a third opinion? If you're dealing with something that's serious or you're coming down with a disease of lifestyle like diabetes or something and you, Mm -hmm. okay, but then you also know that, okay, they have their opinions and their expertise. What do I listen to? And then you also know that, okay, their scope of expertise is within a certain domain. Like doctors are trained in pathology and disease. So you, they're going to have certain way, they just have a certain approach. But then, okay, how about people that are knowledgeable in health and reversing problems through healthy means, whether that's detoxing or cleansing or diet and exercise, simple things, sleep, like things that you don't always, you have to put the pieces together for what works for you in your life. But we're trained, and some of us more than others, we're trained from a very young age to look to authorities as knowing better than we know. But maybe they don't know. That's something my father, as I've grown up uh, into becoming an adult, the or just maturing is probably the better way of saying it, living my own life. I appreciate one thing my father was always like, experts don't know what you need per se. It's you need to pick and choose, but you pick and choose what you need. Again, you're looking through a lens of your own experience, your own what your body is telling you, what your soul, your spirit is telling you, what you trust a higher knowledge and you get, I don't know if skillful is the word, but you, it's a part of it. You become more skillful, more aware in deciphering truth from lies and deception. Okay. And then 
there's a lot of different ways you could go. And at a certain point, you do you need to choose and you need to commit. Wait, and you need to be consistent. Hold on. With the w- ways of living. Yes. Here's a thing that I discovered. I was going to buy a home and I've talked about this before years ago. And I could afford it at the time. And it was a much nicer, bigger home than the one I'm living in now. But there was this creeping feeling that it was the wrong decision. It was just gnawing away at me a little bit at a time. It was like, no, not a good time to do that right now. And there was a a moment where I kept talking about buying this house. But there was also in the back of my mind something that said, it's not a good time. Don't do it. And so I kept, and so I told my wife, I said, look, I just get this feeling that this is an intuitive sense that I shouldn't do this. And come to find out about a year later that the market dropped, I would have lost probably my investment in it. Mm -hmm. And so the, the danger of thinking that you actually have to commit, that's a part of, that can be a false confidence. It can be, and I'm looking at the word confidence. Now, you can be confident in things, that are not viable. And and a lot of people are. A lot of people, how many small businesses fail? 95% of small businesses fail within the first several years. Yeah, I think it's only 7% of entrepreneurs that actually succeed. 7%. But but see, people are confident in that vision because they're driven emotionally by it. So see, again, when you remove the emotion from it, When you move the good or bad feelings from a a, a concept or an idea that you have and you get very objective to it, the objectivity then becomes the regulating force of what you do and why. Now, I want to go to the word confidence. Yeah, that's perfect. I was going to ask you, what is confidence? Here's what it says. And this is the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. It says a feeling or consciousness of one's powers or of one's reliance on one's circumstances. So, in other words, mm. you uh, when you go to the gym, you may be confident that you can lift 200 pounds, but the question is, can you really? So then you test the waters, right? You test the water. You see how much you can lift. Here's the second, the second definition is faith or belief that one will act in a right, proper, or effective way. Now, that is a really interesting concept because – then objectivity has to be the modifying influence, which says to you, wait a minute, I was just talking about this house. And there are a lot of decisions that I haven't made because there's something in me that that regulates my forward motion or my backward motion. And I call that the objective state, which is yeah, I – What is that? What is objective? When you I say don't that? rely on my brain. Yeah, the subjective. <laughs> That's right. The, the subject of your own, your thoughts, all the internal states, the thoughts, yes, the feelings, yes. the emotions, yeah, exactly. the body sensations when something's uncomfortable and you get emotional about that. It yeah. has you react and it has you, you not just pause, like pause. And, listen, wh- and, and, and wait a minute. Yeah. Here's the thing. There is no urgency in a lot of these things. Okay, so if you've got to avoid having a traffic accident, there's urgency there. Your brain and your and everything in you has to deal with that in that moment. You've got to make a decision. There's times where you have to make decisions. And I'm, I'm not saying that there are yeah. really important moments in your life where you make a decision, and then that determines a whole lot of other domino effects, right? But you've got to take away the sense of urgency because a lot of these things can wait. Patience. Right? Yeah, patient. Through patience, possess ye your soul. There, there, right? there it is right there. Patience. there that, that's it. That's <laughs> and it. And then also having an inner, again, here comes trust. Yeah. On uh, an awareness of when patience defaults or collapses into procrastination. Now I'm using patience to be. It's where it's not patience. Now I'm in avoidance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's and great. I'm, I'm avoiding making a decision. Okay, why is it maybe a fear of failure? Because if you're wrong, you make a decision mm. and then it turns out to be the wrong decision. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now I'm frozen. I don't want to make any decisions because I could fail. I could then look foolish. I could be embarrassed. Or I could 
take the the heat and the pain of of failed or make it made a wrong decision and if you're really attached to being right you that becomes a trap again you're frozen because you're right about it could go wrong and you could be wrong but you've got to just keep swinging out in my experience you've got to just be someone who develops someone who has a resilience so if i look at I don't know, running my different businesses, I've several and it's okay. If I measure how many times I make decisions and they go awry or I make decisions and they fail or, but it all, if you become skillful, again, I'm using the word skillful, maybe there's a better word, but you be, you develop a kind of resiliency that you learn from your mistakes or the wrong moves. But then you have to go through, it's, I know I'm going to make decisions that aren't going to turn out. They're not going to work out. I already know, go already knowing that allows for something to keep moving forward, but it allows for discovery. And then when things go awry or there are things fail and fail is when you don't, you have a, a, a hopeful outcome or something, you, you make a decision and like, yeah, you buy a house or you're, you're investing in something and it seems right in the moment and you act on it and then it doesn't turn out. Well, what can, you, there's always the ability to dis- discover something about yeah. yourself. You, and I think in failure is really where we discover. It's really where learning happens. It, it's where success happens. It's not avoiding failure because a failure is a part of the process, part of being a human being. Maybe it's failed relationships, but you, you develop the skill to locate the gold. What is there to learn and yeah. discover? And <clears throat> you ex- to learn to extract the gold, keep the gold and shake off all the rest of it. W- what you're pointing to, not getting emotional about it. Because that keeps you now that brings you into drama that brings you into, okay, now it's self-flagellation. You're going to beat yourself up or you're going to, you're going to blame you're at fault and to blame or someone else or something else is to at fault and to blame or you're responsible, your ability to respond, even when things aren't going your way or things don't turn out, you extract the gold <clears throat> and you shake all the rest off all of it. You just drop the story, the emotion about it. <clears throat> you extract the gold and you move forward. And you take that discovery, that learning, and you bring it to the next thing. You're bringing it forward to the next set of opportunities. But if you're not in that kind of flow, then you get frozen because now you're fearful to make any kind of decision. So now you're living in confusion and indecision and then that is a frozen kind of place. And then pretty soon you can end up just being, okay, I, I'm just in overwhelm. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to see. And if you're in that state, the person has sent this question in of always listening to others and then finding your own self lost and all of that. Okay, we'll start getting your hands on one thing. One thing that you see, one solid data point wrap your arms around that or act on that, get clear, sort out the needle from the haystack and move, act. To what you were just describing, and that is intuition. And intuition is, there's a part of us that is really expandable in intuition, Mm. as opposed to what our brain can figure out with information coming from the outside world, intuition essentially means knowing without reasoning. And this is the part that I was talking about with my house that I was going to buy. The The brain kept telling me this is a great deal. And it was a great deal at the time. But the, the intuition, the bigger part of me kept telling me, the part that I was willing to listen to, that it wasn't a good decision. And I'm so glad that I listened to my intuition. Now, how many times in our lives have we thought to ourselves, that's not a good idea. We should, I shouldn't be doing this or whatever. 
And then later on, you you hear an echo of that, which is, see, I, I try to warn you. There's a part of you that tries to warn you off of certain things. And then you go, God, I wish I would have listened to my intuition at that time. So the intuition part of our being, it will expand into the uh, area that you provide for it by stepping back for a minute when you don't know something. When, and, and instead of looking for somebody to validate what you want to do or don't want to do, because this is what people do. They go out to other people and say, what do you think about this? Which is, to me, there's two sides to that. Yeah, you can, if you're objective, you can listen to those people and learn from them and look at what they've gone through and say, okay, do I want to go through that? Or at the same time, you might say, so-and-so says this. I have a family member that constantly tells me, so-and-so said that, so-and-so said this. And I'm thinking to myself, I have my own sense of things, and I don't need so-and-so's experience or opinion on this because I have my own sense of it. So the doubt part of it comes in, and the, the doubt part of it has to do with making decisions impulsively and emotionally, and then you stop trusting yourself. And then you start to look for other people to give you those answers. And those people's answers are not your answers. They, you can adopt them. Yeah. You can say, okay, that sounds good to me. And then, But then I've had this happen to me before too, is in the advice business, a woman came to me and she was dealing with her mother who was, they had this conflict. And I said, this is what you should do. And I learned the hard way that one time, this was probably 25 years ago, the woman came back to me and said, I did what you told me to do. And it all blew up in my face. And I said, Oh, I see. So because I gave you some advice and you took it, now it's my fault. Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know what? I never tell people what they should do. Never. I say, this is what I would do. Yeah. And that, when you put yeah. it in those terms, you, set, you get yourself off the hook because this is just from my point of view. This is what I would do. This is how I would handle it. How you deal with it is up to you. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, so no, that's very my good. sort of final La thought. Last yeah. point, and then we'll wrap up here. But I get that. And I think, again, the ability to listen to others, uh, but then without doubting yourself. So yeah. <clears throat> I know like in my business, if I'm listening, if, if we're de dealing with something in the business, let's say a project, I'll listen to my staff tell, and, and, I'll, and I'll ask them, I said, so what do you see or what do you recommend? And they'll give their input and, and I listen, but I, I listen to it from not, I, I take all the data. So I'll get everybody's, okay, mm -hmm. what they recommend, but I'm not throwing out my own sense of things, my right. own knowing. I'm like, okay, that's good, but how about do this? Or no, they'll recommend something and, and I'll say, yeah, actually, that works that because it met it, it lines up to what I see to yeah. do perhaps. Yep. So there's, it's, I think listening is a very powerful tool mm. and, and you, and then who are you listening to is very important yeah. because you need, you need to know where that, that, where that knowledge or that who you're listening to. And some people have their own agendas or in your family, or your friend circles, or in work, it's you, you not you need to stay connected to your own inner compass. And when it comes to your own life, you really need to trust that. So I think let's leave it on this. Perfect. Yeah, you all thank you. Please share the show and pay it forward. And thank you for listening this far. Send in your questions to disrupting the drift at baronbaptiste.com, disrupting the drift at baronbaptiste.com. Also, these are up on YouTube. We drop these a couple times a week on uh, disrupt the drift on YouTube. All right, y'all. Thank you. Peace out. Stay true. Stay bold. Keep disrupting and rising above the sea of sameness. Peace out and uh, peace be with you.